Part two of the experiment is to model the structure of a transformer, of an AC transformer. What I have here is two coils, one 300 turn coil, the red one's 300 turn, and the blue one is 600 turns. We're going to be making a step up transformer and also a step down transformer. Here I have a block of iron, this will be our iron core. Okay? Um, why do we need a, a, an iron core? Because like electricity, magnetic flux, magnetic flux is conducted by different materials at different efficiencies. And Iron is a really good conductor of magnetic flux. So what we need to do is to transfer the flux from the primary coil to the secondary coil in all transformers. And that's why we need an iron core or a ferrite core because these, uh, these substances conduct flux very efficiently. We're going to first measure the input voltage by connecting our multimeter set to AC mode to the AC power supply. All right. I tested this earlier, it's about 19 volts, so let's see. It is 18.99 volts AC. Now, how do multimeters calculate AC voltage? That's just a side question that you might be asking, um, because voltages in AC is going up and down, right? So how do you calculate some sort of current, some sort of constant voltage? Um, for example, we all know it's 240 volts coming out of our power points. The, the way they calculate it, the way this multimeter calculates it, is um, it's, it's by taking the root mean square. So basically, the AC is in a sine wave. What we do is we square the sine wave, so everything's positive now above the x-axis. We take the average of that squared sine wave and then we square root the average. So that's why it's called root mean square of, um, of the alternating current. Okay? Um, but you don't need to know that, it's just, just for your interest. So, let's connect everything up and measure the secondary voltage. All right, you notice that it's vibrating. Um, the vibration is because of Lenz law, because at any one time, the polarity, the magnetic polarity of the iron core is opposite to the magnetic polarity generated by the primary coil. Primary is 300 turns, secondary is 600 turns. So this is a step-up transformer. The initial voltage is... Well, actually, the secondary voltage is 7.6 volts, and the input voltage we measured earlier is 19 volts. How come we're actually getting a voltage drop rather than a voltage increase? I think it's to do with the fact that this is a solid iron, a solid iron core, which is inefficient because of eddy currents. What we instead need is we need a laminated iron core. Laminated iron cores restrict the size of the eddy currents in the core. Okay, um, and that's something you need to know. All right, it comes up in multiple choice HSC or short two markers, things like that. This is a solid block of iron, so the eddy currents are big in there. They're generated really big. So the eddy currents are taking power away. So the, the, the voltage is being lost by generating big eddy currents in the, in the core. Instead, what we should do is we should use a laminated iron core. This is a laminated iron core. What it is, is actually many little sheets of iron pressed together, glued together by a non-conductor. As a result, the eddy currents generated are very small. They're limited to the width of, the sh of each individual sheet. We've replaced our little solid iron core with laminated iron core, and this completes a magnetic circuit. So we have the magnetic field can flow strictly through this laminated iron core, and the laminated iron core restricts the size of the eddy currents. So we should see a much greater improvement in the secondary voltage. So look at that. Primary voltage is 19 volts, remember, and the secondary voltage is 34.85 volts. 34.85, which is slightly under half, uh, slightly under twice the input voltage. Okay. Remember the input voltage was 19 volts, so double that is 38 volts. We got 34.85 volts, which is within range of what we're expecting. Okay. What are the losses? Losses are still, there's still some eddy currents, despite the fact that it's a laminated iron core. Also, losses in resistance. Those are the main two sources of, um, sources of power loss in this transformer. And let's switch this around and make a step down transformer. So now, we connect the multimeter to the 300 turn coil, and the power source, the input power, to the 600 turn coil. Now, remember the, um, the power source, 19 volts. As soon as we connect it, the, sec the multimeter should read roughly about 9 volts, or under 9 volts because of inefficiency. 
we get 8.94 volts. So not bad, not bad at all. Um, still slightly under than 9 volts because of power losses. Okay, power losses in eddy currents and also in um, resistance. So that is a transformer in action. So we've demonstrated that solid iron cores do not work very well because big eddy currents are produced. Right? So remember when we first tried it, we got a secondary voltage of only 7 point something volts even though we were expecting 38 volts. So all that power was lost in eddy currents. That's why we use, in reality, we use laminated iron cores. Okay? Um, and the secondary voltages agree with the voltages predicted by the ratio of turns. So when we had a step up, it was 300 turns to 600 turns. We got roughly double the primary voltage. Uh, when we tried it again, reversed, we got 600 turns in the primary, 300 turns in, in the secondary. We got 8.95 volts, which is again very close to what we're expecting. Okay, so that is an AC transformer.